What's up, friends? Happy Wednesday. My name is Rachel Branke. I am the head attorney and photographer at The Law Talk, the go-to legal resource for photographers. Today, we're going to do a dive into cancellation issues. This has been a huge problem that we've been seeing before pandemic, during pandemic, all the times. Cancellations have been a huge issue with a lot of different legalities. So we're going to parse through that. But I also want to, especially if you're a wedding photographer, listen to this. I also want to target in on talking about when and how to utilize a substitute photographer. I am seeing so many posts on social media of photographers, wedding photographers, who have it in their contract that they're going to have a substitute. All of a sudden, they're scrambling the day before trying to find a substitute. We're going to talk about the best practice in legal steps to make sure that you're able to not only offer this to your clients, but be able to fulfill it. Now, if you're watching this on live, please feel free to put comments below. I will answer them as I go along. If you're watching this on replay, just comment replay below. The reason I want you to do this is because A, I want to answer your questions, but B, we want to know how many people are watching and engaging because we're trying to see the best way to give you guys the education that you want and the education that you need. You know, at the Law Talk, I've been doing this for over 10 years just at the Law Talk. I've been doing business for 16 and we're always trying to come up with new product services, free and paid, to help you legally protect your photography business. My motto is you never have an issue until you have an issue. This is why I harp so much on contracts, very specifically about cancellation and substitute photographer or replacement photographer that we're going to talk about today. But really, the thing is, I may be an attorney. This is general information for you. So just, you know, take this as education to research. But my thing with this is, friends, I am not an attorney sitting in an ivory tower, looking down at you going, you got to have this, 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 and this of your legalities. That's not what I'm saying. I'm sharing all this information with you as an entrepreneur like you, as somebody who would rather be focused on marketing and the client experience and making money and making a difference in the world, as opposed to playing cleanup with the legal stuff later. Because let's be real, who are the only ones that win in the end when there's legal issues? The attorneys. And why do we want to pad the pockets of attorneys? It's always going to cost you more time, money, and energy to clean an issue up later. If you follow me for any amount of time, you know I always say these things. I feel like there's something always worth repeating because even if you're someone that agrees with me on it, when it's time to do the legal stuff, it's like, ugh, I don't want to do it. Shift the perspective, adjust yourself and go, you know what? I'd rather spend the 20 minutes on the live with Rachel. I'd rather dig into the Law Talk Facebook group. I'd rather get Rachel's weekly email from the Law Talk. Carve out some time to learn so I can prevent because the end game for us is to make a career out of this, right? At least financial return in our time and effort. So we don't want to be doing legal stuff. All right, let's dig right in into this. Again, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm doing my best to manage wherever you are watching from. Just an FYI, if you do have to fall off, there will be replay in the Law Talk Facebook group on the IGTV as well as on our YouTube channel. So go follow over there. It's going to be the same thing you see here. I'm just going to strip it off here and throw it up over there so you can have this information to come back to. If you forget something, just pop into the Law Talk Facebook group. I have a wonderful admin team that will help to get you guys the answers that you need and to the resources because I've been doing this for over a decade. So we have so much information. Okay, let's dive in because I know all of y'all are busy. I'm busy as well. We've got life to do cancellations. All right, get out your pen and paper unless you're driving. And if you're driving, please don't be looking at me. You can just be listening. And cancellations. You know, one of the things that we found last year, and we found many things during COVID that were deficiencies in people's contracts or major questions. But one of the major things that we found through research, through the clients coming to me through the law firm, through the Law Talk Facebook group, is that cancellations always have a huge question mark. I mean, first of all, if a client wants to cancel on us, we're like, oh, right? Is it about us? Or, oh, lost money. Oh, I could have um, I could have filled a wedding or a portrait in that spot. Oh my gosh, my, you know, it just has this heavy feeling to it. And then you add the extra layer of what do I do now? Now, and if you've already heard this, just stick with me. If you're not using a contract yet, 
this is definitely going to be the live for you because I'm going to talk about here in a minute a couple of ways that you can still protect yourself if you have existing sessions on the book so you don't have a contract in place yet. And when I say contract, I'm talking about the main services contract that gets you booked between you and your client. I think it was two weeks ago, August 18th, I did the legal client timeline talking about the different types of um, documents that you need to have. Check that video out or we also have at thelawtalk.com at the top at start here, we have a visual graphic that walks you through all of that. So if you're unsure, you're brand new to all of this, make note to go look at that. But that booking contract, that services contract, or just what everyone kind of refers to as photography contract, that is where we're going to put cancellation provisions. That language in there of who can cancel and what happens if they do cancel. Again, we saw this huge in pandemic. So if you're someone sitting there that has contracts, and by the way, if you don't have the law talk or if you do have the law talk contracts, our services contracts already have this in there. This is standard because we know that life happens. If you do not have a contract or you're fiercely pulling out your contract now to look for a cancellation section and you don't have one, have no fear. You can still be in a situation where you're going to cancel out a contract. You just want to make sure you get it in writing. But in the inverse, if you're someone that has the law talk contract or you went and invested all this time, money, and energy into getting that custom one done with a lawyer and it has a cancellation provision, that is what is going to control in a situation with cancellations. So anytime we have an issue, this is where we start. And I talked about this on all the lives because I think it's so important in business that we're not using our contracts to beat them over our, our clients over the head with. That we're not using them to be so inflexible. We allow them to protect us and safeguard us, but they also allow us to just baseline legally know what we're required to do, what the other party is required to do, like pay, show up, and all of this. But we, from there, can then, as the business owners, decide if we're going to go above and beyond that. But if you haven't even oriented yourself into what the exact requirement is, that's when all the anxiety and the stress goes crazy. I mean, honestly, dig into the Law Talk Facebook group at any time and see a question, and the anxiety is through the roof. And more often than not, it's because they either say, don't have a contract, didn't think I'd have an issue, but here I am, right? Never have an issue, do you have an issue? Or their contract silent on the contract, uh, I'm sorry, on the contract consolation, or consolation, oh my gosh, cancellation, because we're talking about cancellations. So what we, here's the quick checklist. Pull out your services contract. If you don't have one, go to the law talk and come back later after you get one, but you're already gonna have a cancellation provision in there. Make sure you have a cancellation provision. Make sure you understand off the bat what monies you can keep, what monies you cannot keep. Because generally speaking, you cannot keep 100% of monies received if 100% of services have not been rendered. Now, I talked about this in other lives, and I'm not gonna go too in deep in this. We might do another video of this in the future. Typically, non-refundable retainers or deposits or payments, not even gonna get into sparsing hairs on those terms right now, should always be connected to very specific services. So it's like carving out the date and turning away other clients, pre-consultation, scheduling, all this sort of stuff. It should all be very clearly outlined because that non-refundable payment, as I always recommend, is you should always have a contract and money before you ever put a client on your calendar. Before you ever waste your time, money, and energy in calling them a client, they're not a client until they book you. Booking equals contract plus that initial payment, whether it's just the non-refundable retainer amount or if it's the whole amount of the contract. So we are going to now, we have that money. We're already booked. Now we're in a situation of a cancellation. So we're going to look at the cancellation clause. Again, if we don't have a cancellation clause, this is when you'd want to go look at having a cancellation of contract documents. Now, if it's just a general cancellation of, hey, Susie, thanks for, you know, we were, we're deciding not to have our wedding. We know you can keep the non-refundable initial payment. Uh, best of luck to your photography business. You agree in writing. That might be all good to go. But really, where the complications start happening is when a client has paid you money, your contract is silent to the cancellation or you're wanting to give back more money than you're legally required, that's when you're definitely going to want to use a cancellation of contract document to outline all of these terms. All right, so let's reorient ourselves here. 
We've taken the initial monies, have the initial services contract. Our initial services contract is going to have a cancellation provision. If it does not, best practices, if there's a cancellation, use a cancellation of contract document. If it has a cancellation provision, then we're going to follow what that means. And oftentimes it'll say something to the effect, and don't use this language, this is just off the top of my head, of photographer wish, or uh, client wishes to cancel, submits in writing. That may be sufficient so long as the party that has the obligation that's invoking the cancellation does exactly what the contract says. You don't need to muddy the waters by throwing another cancellation contract document on there. Unless, unless there's a situation where you may be refunding more. Again, legally, what we're legally retired to do. Maybe you're going to refund more than is legally required to them. Or you're going to, or there may be another situation where that was not, contemplated in the initial contract, you would then put it into the cancellation of contract document. All right. And so we see these, you see all these different variations. We have the clear cut cancellation where the contract controls. We have a clear cut cancellation where the contract doesn't control and needs the contract cancellation document. And then we have the big confusion uh, that's all going to be fact specific. I can't go into every single situation you're going to run into. Just follow this process if you're faced with a cancellation. One, don't take offense if a client has to cancel. Sometimes it's a hidden blessing. Two, know what your legal rights are, and then also check to see what your contract controls the behavior to be, and then you can decide what you want to do. Earlier when I mentioned customer service, you know, we can have a situation where we may be legally entitled to keep 50% of the payment because we've rendered about 50% of the services, including turning away other clients, consultations, etc. But you may decide, you know what, I want to give back uh, 25% of that and only keep 25%. As long as you know what you're legally required to do and entitled to, you can go above and beyond. You just can't do less unless it's an extenuating circumstance. Okay, so one of the big questions that we have seen throughout pandemic, and in, you know, we're still dealing with it, Delta variants here, we're still feeling the impact. Um, cancellations are a little difficult when it comes to, well, I guess it's not so difficult. And we have an entire video that I did at thelawdog.com forward slash COVID that will walk through this. So if you're looking at things like government mandates, restrictions of numbers on the event, no events at all, you know, again, I'm US based. So this is all US information. I know there's other countries that are in complete lockdown, but go watch that video and it will give you a little bit more guidance on cancellation. In those situations, I can give you guys a little spoiler on it. One of the things that we looked for when pandemic happened was three key provisions in the contract. Reschedules, cancellation, and force majeure. I'm not gonna sit here and explain all of them to you, but I will say that so many people, photographers, business owners in general, were so focused on force majeure, but the force majeure provision allowing for cancellations and excusing um, um, uh, behavior or fulfillment of contracts or failure to fulfill contracts was a very short amount of time. It would vary to pace on where you live, what your contract said, what the government mandate was, and the timeline at that. We really did find that reschedule and cancellation provisions prevailed more commonly often in pandemic than force majeure did. Maybe in the very beginning when, you know, March 2020, when stuff really started shutting down, perhaps force majeure was a good, and that's assuming that's written properly, right? It's assuming that it's drafted properly. This is why we have lawyers. We don't, we don't just want to whip stuff up ourselves. We don't just want to download something off the internet from um, a non-attorney. There's so many industry leaders selling photog uh, photography contracts that are not attorneys And I reviewed some this last week, and friends, whew. Just don't do it, right? You don't have to come to me, but go to an attorney at least, right? And it's because when these issues happen, we want to make sure that we're protected. So back to the question that we just had, um, our government mandate stuff, you're going to have to look and see if it's going to be a reschedule, cancellation, or force majeure is going to fall, and it's going to fit within the timeline and the circumstances of where you guys are at at that time. All right, so cancellations aren't as overwhelming. Very clear cut. Either the contract controls or else you guys have to resolve it with a cancellation of contract document. 
It is honestly fairly that simple. You get into situations where it becomes stressful and a little bit more confusing when clients aren't necessarily happy with your invocation of your legal rights. You know, they're not happy you're keeping that uh, initial non-refundable payment. And so this is why it's so important Then the client timeline. Again, if you want a visual representation, go to logtalk.com forward slash start here. We have a visual graph of this it shows you we want to walk the client down the timeline, but even within our services contract, the way that I write them, and I think it's just a best practice, and because we want to work with our client psychology, is that we want to make sure they understand all the possible situations up front. I'm not saying you have to sit there and give them a whole legal treatise and like read, like PowerPoint them, right, about your contract, but you wanna have it written in a logical way that almost mirrors the entire timeline and your workflow. How to get booked, when's the session, how does the session happen, da 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 da, all the way through reschedules, cancellations, and legal miscellany. All right. And it just makes it may, it'll make it easier on you customer service wise. It'll make it easier for hopefully clients to read it. They're still adults. They should read it before signing it anyways. But it's definitely we want to make sure we have all these things in our contract. We want to be working with a client psychology and not shying away because it'll be when these issues happen and cancellations are a big one. And, you know, you one thing I do want to say before I move on to substitute photographer is Many times as entrepreneurs, we're so scared of bad press. We're so scared of rejection. We're so scared of what the client will think or say. So we give in. When they say, no, I want my non-refundable monies back, automatically we're like, okay, have it back. No, go back and let's think about this. If you want to, great. But put yourself, ground yourself on what you're legally required and then you can decide you want to go above and beyond that or not right? Don't feel like you have to. And that is what the beauty of being a business owner is that we get to so long as we have that legal structure in place. The flip side of it is if you don't have a contract, you don't have these outline expectations outlined, you don't have your clients haven't agreed to it. The expectations are all over the place. No matter what you do, you're going to end up feeling like you've been used. So use the contracts for you to have um, a grounding for both of you to meet all in one place together. Okay, let's move on. Oh, substitute photographer. Now, this is going to be primarily for wedding photographers, right? Just because, it, or event photographers. It is a very specific day. It's not like if you got sick, um, you couldn't reschedule a senior graduate photography session. That has a bit more flexibility. But let's look at things like birth photographers, newborn photographers, wedding photographers, events. It You should have. I'm putting a little asterisk in it. <laughs> you guys should have, and we include this in the law talk contracts, you should have in there to help safeguard that you will have a substitute photographer available for the client should you not be able to photograph the event. This isn't because you wake up and decide you wanna lay on the couch and binge Netflix and eat bonbons all day. This should be an extenuating circumstances, and we're especially seeing this right now in wedding season, and I, the most common example is that wedding photographers are shooting a wedding on one Saturday. They're finding out by Tuesday that they may have been exposed to COVID. They have a wedding coming up this next Saturday and they're needing to find a substitute photographer. Friends, so many of you have, the, have this in there and you'll say, oh yeah, I'll have a substitute. I can't even express to you how many posts that I have seen, and that's the whole reason I chose this topic today, how many posts I have seen, and this isn't judging, this is just hoping that you'll listen, and I'm like, come on, let's do better, saying, oh, I have a wedding tomorrow, and I don't have a substitute photographer. You should already have one in the bank. You should already have a list of substitute photographers that you know are available, and that could be actually in contact with you within the days leading up and the day of. In fact, if you really wanted to safeguard it, I would probably even go to a step further. If you if you have the financial ability, put them on as an on-call photographer, especially if you're someone that's charging buku bucks for wedding photography. Now, you can apply this to any sort of the photography that I've talked about here so far, but it's just incredible to me. We've got a couple of things to unpack here. One, you're legally obligated, if it's in your contract, to provide a substitute photographer to the client. You should be taking the measures to ensure that you're able to actually fulfill this contractual requirement or you will be in breach. Two, 
Let me go back to number one. Let me say that again. You should have a substitute photographer on deck, ready to go, that you know, not just someone you met at a networking event who said, oh, sure, I'll second shoot or I'll, I'll substitute for you anytime. No, you need to have had conversations with them, have them identified and know that they are available so that you can fulfill your legal commitment to your client if you need to. And two, have them on deck so it's not so stressful, especially now, time during COVID, it's not so stressful trying to find somebody last minute. Now, I understand there's extenuating circumstances, right? You could even go as far as if you wanted to pay these people to be on call. Not necessarily saying you have to do that. Depends on how much comfort you want to have. But I really encourage you, stop being so reckless. This is one of those areas. My blood pressure is getting up because I love you guys. I love that you get on board with contracts. But I think there's a tendency sometimes to have this false sense of safety and protection. Oh, I downloaded it, I reviewed it, I uploaded it, I used it, I'm good to go. No, you need to understand it and you also need to know how to really execute it. And that especially is important when it comes to the substitute photographer stuff. So what have we learned here? Have substitute photographer language if you're in a very time sensitive event where you don't get to control the reschedule. You don't get to control the reschedule if someone gives birth. You don't get to control the reschedule if there's a wedding or an event. You don't. Have the contract language in there and take the requisite steps to fulfill your commitment to your clients. So incredibly important. Now, one of the great things about this is it should not be difficult to find somebody, right? I get it. The clients have already uh, gotten to know you. You have a rapport. There are so many individuals in this industry who would love the opportunity to learn. And starting on as like an on-call backup photographer for people or even as like a professional second, second shooter, because hashtag, you don't have to be a, you don't have to be the primary photographer to be a professional photographer. I know a lot of people who just love sh showing up and shooting and they're professional second shooters and that they're able to step into the role because they've learned it if they have to be the primary, okay? There are so many people. Take this as an opportunity to network. Please shy away from this whole mentality of that it's cutthroat, I don't want to share with local competition. Guess what? We're all offering photography. We're all offering in the same area. We probably fairly have the same products and services. No, no one can be you. So just go out there and make sure that you're legally protecting yourself because guess what? It You will have negative press. You will have issues if a client does not have coverage for a photographer. And frankly, you're not going to be it's not going to be fun if you're sick, you have a family member that's sick, and you're not able to fulfill it, and you're sick trying to scramble to find someone to fill that spot for you. So, I, I mean, I, I know that I sound like a broken record, but it sounds so simplistic, but it's not being done. So, friends, let's do that, okay? All right, so quick recap from today. Cancellation provision in our services contract. Make sure we have it. Make sure we understand it, and then if we don't have one, we use a cancellation of contract document, or if we decide to go outside of that cancellation provision, we come to another agreement with our client, use the cancellation of contract document and make sure you outline any of those specifics. And also, if you are a time sensitive type photographer, um, event, wedding, and all of that, have substitute photographer, it makes you actually have somebody on deck and ready to roll. All right. So again, we are trying to do these every week. I would love to hear the feedback and ask questions. So this is gonna stay up as a live and I mean, as a replay. And so feel free to ask questions below with myself and the team will go into answering it. If you want more one-on-one, -on -one, the Log Talk group is also available. And I think what we'll do next week, we'll hone in on reschedules. We just did cancellation and substitute this week because it's so important, but uh, we'll touch on probably rescheduling and I don't know. Y'all let me know what you want to hear because I am here for you. Y'all have a good one and I'll see you soon.